Hey there, beautiful people. I'm Tracy Rigdon, and this is the Contrast Project Lounge Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking with Jacksonville's very own drip broker, Mr. Michael Armano. We're going to be talking about bespoke tailored suits and threads. Are you all ready for this? Let's go. Joining me now on the podcast is the drip broker from Jacksonville, Florida, Mr. Michael Armono, my good friend. Michael, how are you doing? I am doing very well. I'm trying to stay cool this summer. Uh, as you can tell, I, I do that very well. Uh, I look cool. I stay <laughs> cool. I don't know very many people that dress the way that I do here in Florida, uh, but I'm trying to change that. So here we go. <laughs> That's hard. That's hard to do in Florida because, as we say, it's moist. It is, yeah. It is. It's extra moist around here, so you got to, you know, it, you got to deal with that. <laughs> it's all good, brother. It's all good. Hey, I wanted to start out before we get into our topic about threads and all that. I want, I want you to explain to my friends, fans, and followers here what it is. Uh, bespoke what what is bespoke what it is to be bespoke what is bespoke house and and how important bespoke house is to the arts and creative community in jacksonville florida yeah absolutely so i've been in the game of fashion and bespoke clothing for over 10 years so the term bespoke uh, originated in the the land of tailors you know hundreds of years ago it used to be uh, the term bespeak, and it meant to speak for something. So when you went to your tailor 100 years ago, you would go pick out your fabric, and then they would pull nine yards of that fabric to make a three-piece suit. That's where that term, dress right. with nines, comes from. They take that nine yards, and then it was bespoken for. It was then something that was going to become unique, crafted for an individual. So over time, that word bespoke, you know, it literally means to speak for something. So it kind of has gotten diluted quite a bit over the years of fast fashion. It has come to mean custom, but honestly, it means something a lot more than that. Uh, bespoke is something that is truly unique uh, to an individual, and it's not just the, in the clothing world. You can have bespoke furniture, bespoke homes, bespoke cars, anything that is crafted with a high quality of craftsmanship, glass work, artwork, things like that. Those things are bespoke if they're made specifically for something, if they're made to speak for something. So actually, a lot of artists are bespoke artists or artisans. Um, they may not even realize it, but that term is something that we latched on to because we really want to get the point out there that we are here to speak for something. And that's where Bespoke House comes in. Bespoke House is an artisan community, and we have a wide variety of diverse members. Um, I'm a clothier, so obviously your bespoke clothing comes to mind, but also bespoke hand glass uh, blown creations, you know, functional art. Uh, we've even done collaborations for bespoke handcrafted glass blown buttons, you know, for my clothing and things like that. But not only that, we also have craftsmen, we have artists, creators, digital creators, a lot of content creators and influencers. And our community is very vast, not only in the mediums that we cover in our memberships, but also the, the style of life, you know. We have people from every walk of life, every age range, and all different backgrounds, and it allows us to have a really diverse community that gives us the opportunity to speak for something. So Bespoke House, uh, aside from just the place, it's kind of become a community of sorts, and it's a grassroots media outlet, you know, very much like the Contrast Project. Your goal is to be able to get out there and to be able to spread the information about what's going on. You know, that's kind of what we're here for from the artisan standpoint. And we're here to help support our artisans, to help support our local businesses and our event organizers. So that way, when people say there's nothing to do in Jacksonville, uh, they're 100% wrong when they say that. They just don't know what's going on. So that's where Bespoke House comes in. We're trying to give people that opportunity to be able to get the word out about what they're doing, whether it's a new artwork, a new workshop, a class, a course, whatever. Um, so that's kind of what we have here. We invite people to come out 
and experience and showcase their work and speak for something. Oh, oh, absolutely. And and it's a wonderful thing. You know, I, I want to tell the people that are watching or, or listening right now, I have personally been to Bespoke House uh, and and I find it to be a remarkable uh, uh, new thing in Northeast Florida, in Jacksonville. Uh, you, you've got so many different, like like Michael was saying here, you've got so many different people there. You've got not only the painters and artists and, you know, creators of all kinds, but you've got people that, that are into gardening, people that are into food creation. Uh, they, uh, fist pickle glass, those guys create some amazing stuff i mean it really is a hub of creators yeah and one of the biggest things that we enjoy about this is because it's so diverse you know we have a garden club that meets every sunday uh you know yeah. we have different uh meetups and we have be spoken for which is like an open mic style event for one and all there are a ton of different events we're actually going to be hosting film festivals coming up we're hosting immersive exhibits you know our our goal is to be able to make you know, the experience out of it. You know, it's hard to get people out, especially at this time in the year. We're in the dead set of summer. It's the dog days of summer. Oh, yeah. So really, for us to be able to energize our community, get people excited about what's going on in the community, and being able to help support our artisans all along the way, local businesses and event organizers, that's huge for us, you know, because, like, we are all independent artists of our own. I'm a clothier. My mm -hmm. business and my success uh, is, is the own thing, you know, so I have to focus on that. But with all the time and energy that I have outside of that, I'm trying to give back to the community. And all of our members do the same thing. So we're always looking for ways to help support each other, collaborate, create new things, or even challenge old ideas and concepts. You know, you may think, oh, well, this is the only way to do something. But nowadays with technology, opportunity, resources, the sky's the limit on what we can create together. So this is a place where you can feel comfortable with, like, you don't have to keep a secret. You don't have to keep secrets here. You can just talk about your ideas freely. You know, you can right. collaborate and expand on those thoughts, and we're here to support those endeavors. Um, so it is nice because it's just a little safe haven that you can come spend some time at, and you don't have to worry about, oh, you know, my next big idea is going to get scooped by some tech billionaire. You know, you're not working in that high-stress environment. We try to cater to right. the artisans and what their needs are. So right. the, the, right. the more right. diverse our membership is, the more offerings and resources that we're going to be able to provide because we can lean on the specialty of our members. You know, so I don't have to worry about, oh, well, how do I offer the best this and that? All I have to do is curate the people, the services, and the products to be able to offer these fine things out in our community. And I just have to highlight the people who are already doing those things. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay, Michael, let's move on and talk about the main topic. Well, you and I had discussed earlier, and we have in the private group for the uh, developmental group for the podcast – uh, talking about uh, threads, the Threads app by Instagram, Meta. And, uh, you know, as a clothing designer, a creator, uh, you know, a member of the artist community, basically, you know, how do you envision threads um, and creatives in terms of showcasing their work on connecting with their audience on threads, the app? Absolutely. So I think we have a really great opportunity with Threads, uh, mainly if you look at it from an artist standpoint. It literally is a blank canvas at this point, but it is a blank canvas with a built-in audience of millions and millions of people. Um, and the beauty yeah. of Threads is that, for the most part, your following, your really, really close following, the people who are engaging, the people who are commenting, you know, sharing your stuff, your actual supporters, they're going to follow you to Threads. And that's one of the biggest things is because you may not have all of the uh, followers and the numbers and, you know, all the analytics and insights that you have on, you know, your normal Facebook page, your Google, your, your Instagram. But what you're right. getting in threads right now, because it's in such an early phase of its lifespan, you're getting a fine tuned, honed in audience of people who directly support you. OK, so with most of these media channels and, and digital outlets, we tend to cater you know, to these um, caricatures, if you will, right? My Instagram is a little more uh, reserved, whereas my Facebook is a little more sassy, um, but I have to say, you know, somewhat, 
mildly inappropriate, you know? Like, I can't get too crazy on Facebook because I don't like that. <laughs> I can get outlandish on Twitter, you know? Uh, but the people who would follow me on Twitter may not be the same people who follow me on Facebook or Instagram or what have you. So then you go right. to this position where you're basically splitting your own self into these different caricatures of yourself, you know? And you're kind of playing these right. roles and these different things, you know? Imagine LinkedIn, you know? LinkedIn are executives, business professional, HR directors. These are people who make millions of dollars. They're professionals. They're not going to LinkedIn to be entertained. But if you're entertaining on LinkedIn, that's where you can capture some of that market share. So there are right. ways that we can utilize threads in a way that is not only self-beneficial as an artist, as a small business person, as a creator, but you can actually cultivate an even more fine-tuned demographic who like you for you and your work, not just like, oh, I saw their work. I liked the page on Facebook 10 years ago. I happen to still follow right. it. But this is, a, this right. is a, a demographic that is literally so clued into you that as soon as you got threads, they got that invite. And they were like, yeah, I'm definitely going to follow them. Right? They have a brand new frontier, a brand new opportunity to cultivate what their feed looks like. And they chose you. So all of your followers, no matter how many you have on threads, they're actually going to be a more fine-tuned audience than most of these channels out now. And you can really cater right. to that and cultivate something from that. Right, right. Yeah, I, uh, I uh, have personally said in many, many posts that I've made that I see enormous potential in threads. Uh, I know it's very similar to maybe, I've said this before, it seems kind of like if uh, Instagram and Twitter had a baby. You know, it's got some of the features of both. But I really do. I really do think that it's got a lot of potential. And I know that uh, a lot of people have said that, you know, since the newness has worn off, that Threads has dropped in its usership per week by about 50 percent. And and honestly, that's to be expected uh, to me. That's to be expected. But uh, you can still. Uh, find great value in in what they're trying to do, and I I really do see a lot of potential in it. Yeah, absolutely, and that comes to uh, one of those things when it, you're a business or an artist or an entrepreneur. Consistency is key. Consistency and maintaining these channels, right? So a lot of people are feeling burnout, and they're actually not posting as much on Facebook or Instagram, oh, yeah. but, you know, they, they schedule a couple weeks worth and automate it through uh, one of these apps or platforms and then forget about it. And it just yeah, kind of rolls yeah. over. So when you're not actively engaged yourself with that channel, you're not cultivating the, the type of feedback and engagement you want. You know, right. when I purposefully right. go out with a, a reel in mind, right, I'm going to go and I'm going to shoot this reel and I'm engaged and I'm activated and creating this content. And then I'm putting it out there. Those pieces perform far better because they can tell the viewer your audience they can tell when you're actually engaged in what you're doing you know if you're just putting out bs content to fill time that's not going to help you and that's what a lot of our um, branding has become you know so this is actually a renaissance in the digital age for you to cultivate something that is more unique you know and like being able to stay consistent on that is uh, an excellent thing if you're feeling burnout on these other apps Threads is actually a really great outlet because it's less scary, right? Your whole market, your whole demographic, your whole audience, they're not there, right, to judge you, to, to talk about you or think about you in some type of way. So that's less nerve-wracking. And the user interface is actually very intriguing in how they designed it. And, you know, I feel like right. they definitely pulled a lot of this from the Twitter aspect, you know, as far as how it operates. Sure, um, But it's sure. very simple. Sure. You know, colors are, are very comfortable. It's dark. It's pleasing you know there's not a whole lot of distraction and flashy this right. and that it's a very right. simple user face which makes it a little easier to talk to you know so like if you're feeling some type of way or you're wanting to express yourself as a human being it can be scary to do that on your big platform uh but if you can pop over to threads right. and say hey real talk you know this is what we're feeling right. i know a lot of you feel that way what are your thoughts you know you can actually start a more uh, personal conversation you can actually start something that's going to engage you more and your audience is going to feel for you right they're going to connect with you right. you're going to be human just like they're human you know so to give them that opportunity to see you not as oh i'm this 
the suit guy, you know, or I'm the, the guy over at Bespoke House, but like I'm actually just Michael, you know, I'm a, I'm a human being underneath it all. You take all the hats of the different characters that I play for all the different brands and organizations and people that I hype up in the community. There's a person underneath there and your audience wants to know that person, you know? So that's a really, really great opportunity for you to uh, let loose a little bit and show a little bit more about how you're feeling, what your struggles are, what your resources are that you're looking for that you need, because all it takes is one person to see what you need. And like there could be help out there, right? For whatever that is. Yeah. And the thing about threads right now is that your audience, like we mentioned earlier, they're tied in, they're direct to you. They're interested in supporting you because of how they found you at this point. Um, so right. your market on threads right. is probably your, your most opportunity to engage people for a lifetime and bring clients that are going to stick with you and support you for a good long time. And you yeah, have to and understand I, I, that the, I was going to say yeah, that go meta ahead. is huge, right? Threads isn't mm-hmm. going anywhere, right? So it doesn't no, make sense, no. uh, you know, even if you got on it's whatever. Like, they have the money to bankroll this, whether they successful or not. It doesn't matter. So let's take advantage of it and let's cultivate what the thread is going to look like. You know, as artists, we can all collectively decide that, okay, the creative class is going to be on threads. Like, that's going to be our platform. That's where we're going to so we're going to be real with it. So then you can bring the creative class together and then give them a forum, much like what we're trying to do at Bespoke House, you know, but like let's use this channel that Zuckerberg has built up for us, you know, whether they stole the algorithm and the code from Twitter or not. Who cares? It's two billionaires going at it, but like we're all out here and we're <laughs> the people that make them all that all right. money. So we're the content right. creators and they need us and they want us to make more content. So if we're going to make more content, Let's not just give them what they want. Let's take advantage of the opportunity and get what we need out of it. So what do we need threads to be? You know, what type of things and conversations do we need to have on threads? I think we're actually seeing the results of a lot of that with the uh, Actors Guild strike and the Writers Guild strike. The conversation is moving on threads because a lot of the creators and influencers are on threads. Right, right. And, 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 one of the one of the big things one of the big things I want to emphasize too is that while on threads currently you see an uptick in the number of people that are doing this uh, no democrat left you know lower than whatever I'll follow you follow me all that stuff and 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 I'll be honest with you I I will follow a lot of people that follow me I get that okay but this follow me follow you thing you know, it does get irritating. That's on everywhere. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and now it's infiltrated over on Threads. Yeah, and and uh, when I see when I see those Threads on Threads uh, that are just completely uh, political, that they're just you know just pounding the anti-Trump message, which which honestly I I'm an anti-Trumper, but Honestly, I get tired of seeing those things every single goddamn day. Uh, And uh, I think that maybe people misunderstand what the algorithm is doing when you continue to like for like on that shit. Because, quite honestly, it goes back years. Instagram will tell you, if you start following people just to get followers, you're going to follow into a negative algorithm. Yeah, for sure. And that's the, that came with a quickness, too. You know, it didn't take but a, a week into it. You start getting these bot accounts and follows it, and this and that. Now, one thing it I, took one, it one, took one day. <laughs> yeah, it took no time at all. And that's the thing with new technology. It's all going to follow you. So uh, what I have liked about threads is that you can't, as far as I know, I, I dug a little bit, but I can't see who other people are following, which I think is fine. And I think they tested that with Instagram where they were uh, trying to, you know, it would show you how many likes you got maybe, but it yeah. didn't show you who they were and that type of yeah. stuff. And like, I like that because I don't, if there's one place I don't want to follow everyone, it's threat. Uh, because that's like, I'm trying to cultivate it as a safe haven for my voice, you know, and, and so far I've used Twitter in my life so far to be chaotic, right? Because that's what Twitter is. It's, a, it's the wild, wild west. 
you know? So when I have all these uh, crazy outlandish thoughts where I'm like, man, people just won't understand my sense of uh, irony or the reverence of the situation, you know, that's where it goes to Twitter, you know? So yeah. now I'm having a, a similar moment with threads and I'm looking at it like, okay, so maybe I could just be real about how I'm feeling because it's a lot easier for me to type it into a blank box that's black and dark uh, versus like going on a, a live stream and like, Hey y'all doing the thing again, you know? <laughs> so it, it's given me an opportunity yeah, uh, to be able to really put the ideas out there and like, Hey man, we're all struggling right now. And everything I'm trying to do is just to try to help other people, you know? So like I'm right. hoping these type of things catch on um, because if I can gain from it, then, Certainly, it will work for someone else out there. Um, but I think there's been a lot of success with the creative class moving into this new uh, frontier and being able to control the conversation, especially when it comes down to what we're, you know, battling with right now. And it's getting paid, you know. So Facebook is doing the exact same thing with this uh, Threads app, right. you know. Right. They're going to make money because we're there, okay. So we control right. Right. everything. So if the app right. is not entertaining, yeah. it's because we're not there to entertain. So if they want us on the app, then they need yeah. to uh, be able to figure out how to pay us, you know? Well, I tell people all the time, uh, you know, this whole like for like and follow for follow thing, you know, forget that shit. Uh, people need to engage with each other. Uh, uh, enga engagement is the bottom line. And, and and I still I still maintain my Twitter accounts. I've got several, uh, and mainly not just to troll, <laughs> which I do, but I I I actually follow a lot. I actually follow a, I follow a lot of fantastic journalists on Twitter. A lot of great writers and journalists are still on Twitter, and uh, some of them are migrating over to Threads and. And you can pick them up in different locations, but but the fact of the matter is, there's still some great people lingering on over there. So I'm not giving up my Twitter account until until they go belly up. Yeah, honestly, I don't foresee myself moving off of any apps. If anything, it's more apps, you know, no. uh, especially for us entrepreneurs and artists. Yeah, being everywhere <laughs> is important. Um, they they literally yeah. have companies that do this for you. You know, like if you don't want to have to manage it all and yeah. pay for all that, um, what the Spoke House is trying to do is bring those independent journalists and artists and creatives together and give you the resources to do it on your own. Or if you want to be one of the hands off and just be like the, the dialed in creator, then you could just pay our, you know, our team to do that because we're cultivating the producers to be able to do that. And I think that's one thing yeah. that the artists uh, and the creative class has really been missing because a lot of the creators I know are so good at what they do, but they don't know how to talk to, about themselves. They don't know how to sell themselves. They don't know how to repurpose the uh, original content that they've created to make more revenue hand over fist, right? Um, so a lot of times they miss out on that opportunity. And I have to be honest, the issue with that is that most of those people are probably neurodivergent, you know? So they're on the spectrum in some way, shape, or form or have some kind of like personality disorder and they don't have the health care to be able to manage all that, mitigate these issues, right? So that's one of the things is like, when I see people talking about politics and all this stuff, I always dial it back to the real issue. And it has nothing to do with the politics because it's blah, blah, blah over this and that. It's the core issue. Like, what are we actually talking about here? It's health. Right. Are the people healthy? Right. You know, like, are we taking care of our people? So like, if people are burned out on your social media app, and you're like, all right, the way to cure that is to launch another social media app. Well, I think you might have missed the picture about what we actually need from these apps. We're not getting the community we need. But we have an opportunity that they've already developed and built. You know, they spend all the money to do it. Let's just hold in and yeah. take advantage of these platforms and, and use yeah. them for the way that we need them to use, not for the way that they right. want us to use it. You know, one of the best examples right. of this is with uh, Kick.com. Uh, so this is a new live streaming app. And they're backed by online gambling companies of some kind. You want this one? So, this, so they're backed by an online gambling company. It's called Kick.com. And they pay 95% of the subscription fee to the creator. So for every $5 subscriber you have per month, you get four ninety five. And they're backed by an online uh, like gambling company. So, you know, they got the means to be able to, to keep this thing going. But they are very creator-friendly. 
And we're seeing a lot of people jump off of Twitch, which has for a long time been the, the top oh, dog yeah. in that arena for live streaming, especially for gamers and things like that. And Kick is, has basically uh, started to take over on that because now Twitch is actually making it exclusive. You know, if you're on Twitch and they catch you streaming on another platform, you won't get your revenues. So they're trying to make it exclusive, and that's just not how humans like things. We like freedom. We like choice. You know, that's kind of how our whole country was founded, uh, to be able to give us these opportunities. So um, people are are getting off of these old platforms, and they're getting on these new platforms. So with this opportunity we have with Threads, I think it's a perfect time to reclaim it uh, for what we need. So that's exciting. You know, I'm definitely going to continue using it. I encourage anyone to jump out there, at least to have a void to shout into. You know, like, because if you're burned out on social media and you're seeing, you're going through your, your feed and you're doom scrolling, you're seeing all these things that are happening and you don't actually do anything yourself, you know, like, stop, that's not healthy. You know, go be a, a creator, <laughs> create more than you consume. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get people to do is like, yo, even I have to do this. I have to live stream more. You know, I got to get in front of the camera. I got to talk to people. I got to go out and about and I got to get involved in the world because we just went through this uh, weird time frame where we were locked inside, you know, and then everybody was weird, even when you were outside and for a while there. And like, we're still kind of weird. So we're just trying to get back into the social aspect of being human. Um, right, why not right. use the social platform? help us reconnect versus it being what it has been and just like a mindless entertainment so I can see like forget right, what's going right. on you know? actually a lot of cool stuff that's happening now and again and more so now than it has been the past few years so I think we have a great opportunity to take advantage of the conversation and move it in right. a direction that we want to have you know Hollywood right, right now is trying to give um, their, if they take over the AI Imagine this, you, you turn on Netflix and you tell it what you want to watch, right? And you're like, oh, I want to watch a funny movie with Bill Murray set in Cancun, you know? It can whip up a little thing and AI feeds you a thing, but that's just recycled information and there's no real story or creativity to it. And it very well could be entertaining, but that's all it is, is entertaining. So it's just not, like basically numbing your brain, you know? Like you're not right. getting any, right. Right. anything real out of it, you know? You're just forgetting what the world is like, you know, we've seen this in Pixar movies, you know, like it's, it's not that hard for us. To <laughs> I know. Out, so I think it's important to be able to say, no, you actually need the creators. And if anyone needs replaced with AI, it's CEOs and executives and data analysts. And like, there's so <laughs> many like tactical, just like plug and play jobs that AI is actually way better suited for. And AI itself has even admitted that it's not great at creative gigs. You know, like you really need the human aspect for this. So. I have, I, anyway, yeah. I have long, I've, I've long, I've long been using uh, generative uh, AI, and uh, I see it as a working tool. Uh, it can be abused. I know that there are uh, currently issues in Hollywood where people are being sued. Chat GPT and the owners of. Uh, uh, that are being sued by some of the actors. Uh, uh, it, it can be it can be abused, but I see it as a tool, and it it can be used as a tool without plagiarizing anyone's material. Now, uh, one thing I do want to ask you, Michael, uh, uh, considering considering the vibrant uh, artist community in Jacksonville, let's get back to the subject of Jacksonville. Uh, how do you think Threads? We're talking about the app again. How do you think that can facilitate local communications and collaborations amongst artists uh, and creatives, you know, fostering something more supportive and and maybe getting people to crawl out from underneath their shell, if, you know, in so many words? Uh, yeah, so that's an interesting question because the, the challenge with Threads right now is that there's really no collective voice. Um, or a way to organize particular groups, you know? So I guess we would have, it's the same old game, right? You have to pick right. something that people are going to um, follow uh, in a hashtag format. That's still the technology we're using. It's 10 plus years old. Right. You know, we're just calculating keywords at this point. Um, right. So it's tricky in those type of formats, whereas uh, Facebook has actually really found a lot of success be- with their group. 
right? Like a lot, a lot of success with groups because yes. you're basically giving people a platform with a number of different ways to contribute content and they can categorize themselves and secure themselves and moderate their own communities uh, very much like Reddit. Um, but Reddit is a little more of that wild west of a uh, South yeah. one, you know, there's not as <laughs> yeah, much yeah. Um, oversight, I guess, bar your lighter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's interesting. So to get people on a local level to do that, it really has to be a grassroots mm -hmm. movement. So it has to be literally, you know, like a, a community of people, actual human beings that get together and do things locally to get people to say, hey, look, uh, we're having this conversation on threads. So how do you get in front of a bunch of people like that, right? So this is a great example um, right. that Bespoke House is used for the hot new ball summer. So we're doing a big tweet stake, and we started July 1st. And there's a $10,000 bespoke prize package, right? So it's going to have a full styling from Calypso Couture, my brand, you know, a live glass blowing demo and uh, live yeah. glass work that comes from that live art, all this stuff, right? It's a huge package. So the idea is it's a big sweepstake. It's a giveaway. And you can buy a membership and you can get entries or you can buy, uh, find these little ice cream cones. So we found a bunch of tiny ice cream cones. They're like... Uh, handful size tiny little ice cream cones and what we're doing is we're actually going to local businesses art galleries festivals we're going and engaging in the community and we're taking these ice cream cones and we're hiding them right so we'll just leave them there and they have a qr code on the bottom and it's a complimentary entry it's a free membership for a month 20 knots here at bespoke house and it comes with two entries so there's no entry to play you just find the ice cream awesome. cones awesome. by getting engaged with in your city right that's how we're engaging the city and we're driving them to bespoke house website so that you can watch our live stream so that you can get involved in these events that we do funeral parties all this and that this is a way that not only can we draw attention to ourselves as a business and a cooperative and a community the creative class but also we can support our community directly by literally just going out there and and sharing you know the opportunity so basically what we've done is we've partnered up with a bunch of local businesses, event organizers, things like that. You know, people that support what we're doing. The middle of the summer right now is hard for everyone. Business is slow. No one's going outside. Everyone's staying in the air conditioning, right? We've been out here 30 minutes. I'm outside, dog. I'm wearing a suit, okay? I'm out here sweating it this summer, the drip broker, and we're doing it for you. Because what we're going to do is we're going to these events and we're hiding the ice cream cones. And it's a big, fun game gets people excited we get to go spend money with local businesses so with these endeavors we're going to be doing like cash mobs we're going to be going out there um so say for example we have uh, ice cream social coming up we're going to be dropping some details about that um, but we're going to go meet up at a local ice cream joint and we're going to hide our little ice cream cones and then not only that but we're going to encourage all of our people that are going to come join us that day to bring a 20 dollars bill and then spend that 20 dollars with that local business. We're gonna have artisan vendors, we're gonna have a community, uh, we're gonna have little performances, stuff like that. So the idea is that we're trying to get our community engaged in the slowest and hardest time for our city, right? Most of the Midwestern yeah. states and the cold states, they do this in the winter time, right? They struggle in the winter because everyone stays at home, it's cold, no one's going outside. We don't have that. We struggle here in the summertime. And while most you know, companies and a lot of stuff, like we get tourist business, and that's like our saving grace here in Florida, that we have tourists that come here. They don't know how hot it gets. They just come out here and sweat to death, uh, and then we send them back home, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this is a, a, right. a way that we're getting our community activated. So you could utilize a very similar technique to be able to engage your community. So not even here in just Jacksonville, but beyond. If you're trying to get people connected, you got to find a way to connect to people. Right. That's the first and foremost thing. If you want people to pay attention to what you're doing, you have to pay attention to what everyone else is doing, because that's how you yeah. uh, really support a community. Right. We don't really have right. this competitive mindset here. You know, I would happily invite other clothiers and other designers and, and people that uh, you would think are like conflicting. I would invite them happily to come check this place because they aren't my competition. They're not bad for everyone. It's all eat out here. 1.5 million people in just Jacksonville proper, not to mention uh, all the way around the first coast, and we have like 2,000 people a day moving in to the Northeast Florida area. This is a opportunity for young business entrepreneurs, people who may work for 
corporate all their lives. I'd like to thank all my friends, fans, and followers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All of you. And those of you who are not already following us, please like, share, comment. And on the YouTube channel, like, share, comment, and smash the subscribe button so that you get all the new episodes. Don't forget to ring that bell. You get notifications. And listen. Once again, I want to thank each and every single one of you. Your support means the world to me, and I certainly do appreciate it. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, in my closing thoughts, I just want to I just want to back up for a second and and talk for just a minute about Bespoke House and what uh, Michael Armano is doing over there. If you haven't heard of Bespoke House, and you're in the Northeast Florida area, I, I highly recommend you look it up. It is a artisan community in and of itself. It's, it's a wonderful facility uh, where artists and creators get together on a regular basis, and Michael is really doing a fantastic job there. Also, I'd like to invite you all to join us over on Threads, yet another social media outlet. I know, I know, I know. And the newness has worn off, and we'll be talking about it quite a bit in upcoming episodes because I do think that it is uh, something that's going to make its mark in social media. Well, like I say at the end of every episode, always remember, take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time, peace.